<laughs> I have literally never been so excited to open something and unbox something, uh, probably ever. I have been waiting for this for months oh, baby. and months, uh, especially given the fact that my current internet <laughs> service provider is hot garbage. And uh, just to be part of something that's kind of neat, new technological advancements, very, very exciting, especially at this very early point in its process. This is SpaceX Starlink Internet. <laughs> it's such a large box. Uh, it's really quite remarkable. All right, on the top, a very handy guide of what exactly to do. Uh, step one, point outside at uh, the sky. Step two, plug it in to the various parts. And step three, check for the wireless signal. So easy enough, nothing on the other side. <laughs> and that is Starlink. Um, pretty large satellite dish there. And it's all plugged in already, which is kind of interesting. Um, really idiot proofing it. Uh, nice firm base here. Not very heavy, so if you do just use the base, you'll probably need something to weight it down. Uh, not the heaviest base. Um, let's go power cables next here. So, uh, obviously, big old Ethernet line here. I'm assuming this is Ethernet anyway. I'm looking for the other end. Okay, so, yes. So, and of course, this isn't just your classic Ethernet line. Uh, this is PoE, or Power Over Internet. Um, essentially, they're also sending power through Ethernet to make sure the dish can work and all of that. So, uh, a traditional Ethernet line is not going to work here. Big beefy cable though, it's pretty durable. Uh, your power connector here. Uh, white, I would assume goes to the router and it's already plugged in. Literally everything is already plugged in. Which I think is cool uh, because it really idiot proofs it. Uh, but though that does kind of make it a little bit more difficult to move around. Really well packaged too. This is some very, very good, um, Packaging material. Uh, regulatory notices. I don't know if I need any of this. Is this anything important I need? So we got some uh, specifics in terms of operating conditions. Uh, temperature, uh, minus 22 to 104 degrees. Uh, that covers a pretty good part of the climate. Uh, obviously the desert southwest. Um, maybe a bit more of an issue and really cold temperature. We hit minus 23, I believe, this winter. So just outside the uh, cold. Let's get dishy out. You know, it's lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I'm not gonna lie. It's really not that heavy. Um, is there anything else in here? Again, packaging is phenomenal. Uh, they want like good plastic as opposed to like styrofoam. And uh, I could see how this could hold up pretty well with some negligent packaging. Ugh. All right, let's snark. Could have been a little bit more graceful. So there's your big satellite dish. Here's the stand. locking mechanism, and there we go. Whoop. <laughs> that is Starlink. How incredibly cool is that? Um, looks like no height adjust uh, on the stand. It just snaps into place. Um, flat dish, I assume underneath this, uh, I believe this is what's called a phased array antenna 
or there's a bunch of different sensors underneath this, which is constantly looking at different satellite signals. Uh, what's interesting about Starlink is that instead of looking at the southern sky, like a lot of traditional internet and TV providers, uh, this actually needs the northern sky. Uh, so if you have a existing satellite internet provider, the dish that you have is probably pointed south towards the equator where uh, satellites are in geostationary orbit. Starlink, they are in low Earth orbit and they're constantly rotating around the Earth. And Starlink is designed to look at the northern sky, uh, the northern part of the sky. So just keep that in mind if you are planning on getting Starlink. Uh, if your setup works for existing satellite, it may not work for Starlink uh, given the sky difference is completely different. Obviously, this does not look very difficult to set up. Um, you have Starlink here on its stand. Just plop this somewhere. We have a uh, big old Ethernet line, PoE, power over internet. Yeah, AC, PoE, injector, so PoE, power over in Ethernet. Uh, and then you have your modem, which is very traditional SpaceX, very uh, sleek, modern looking. And that is Starlink. Um, it looks like this is even PoE too, yeah, so even to the um, router modem thing, uh, that is all PoE as well. So that's cool. Um, really not a whole lot else in terms of directions uh, besides the very large sheet here. Um, so again, Starlink, here's a Falcon 9 that carries Starlink to orbit. I don't know why I have this here. Um, so Starlink, uh, download the app, which I've already done. Uh, then we just bring it outside. It doesn't say which way to face it, though, because I feel like it should say Northern Sky. I know this because I've looked into it already, but I feel like it should probably say that, whatever. Uh, plug it in. Uh, so black, dark side, black cable goes to uh, Dishy. White cable, white, goes to modem. And then connect it to your phone. So that looks actually incredibly simple. So uh, shall we just go ahead and try this already? Uh, that's the unboxing. Ooh. All right, so now we're gonna take Dishy out here. We're gonna try and set it up. We're gonna put a timer, see how long it takes to go from um, setting it up outside to internet. Okay, so we put satellite dish facing the north. And then we will take a POE line. You know, now that I'm actually trying to set this up, it's actually kind of more annoying that it's all plugged in, I think. Oh God, that's not good. Let's not drop the modem in the snow. Okay. Yeah, I think this is definitely more annoying than it's all plugged in. I guess we let Dishy do its thing. All right, so now we have to get Wi-Fi on. Let's do it in front of this camera here. Do Wi-Fi on. We have to open up the Starlink app. Changing IP address. Okay, so here we are. Let's do enter Wi-Fi name. The space internet, duh, um, okay, enter Wi-Fi password, okay. So we are connected to space internet, so now I can go back to Starlink, okay, connecting, here we go. So for our case, 
Uh, we need to be able to see the northern sky without any obstructions. And thanks to a derecho which kind of wrecked our power, um, everything in Cedar Rapids, we now have a nice clear view. So Starlink is now attempting to connect to the satellites. You can see it's doing some magic right here. And we are online. Okay. Show more info. So latency loaded. Again, it's just connecting, so my understanding is it does take a little bit of time. Take a photo. <clears throat> Let us uh, reply. Sending this tweet from space. Space. It's uploading. And it looks like it uploaded. Twitter seems to be loading pretty snappy. And there it is. Heck yeah. And so, on the clock, let me pause. So given a little bit of time with me messing with cameras and focusing lenses and all that, I was able to go from unboxed Starlink to connecting to the internet in just over 10 minutes. So that's pretty remarkable. So imagine like coming from a time, uh, you know, when you're on an existing satellite internet uh, with latency of 600, 700 milliseconds, where it's actually impossible to play. Uh, but then going to an internet surface like this, where you're rocking 50, 60 millisecond lag, which is totally playable. I mean, this is completely playable. Got a missile? Yep. Um, so, I mean, that's just awesome. I mean, it really is just quite amazing to see technology, how it how really how much it's improved. 250-83, not great. But again, playable. That's the really important thing here. Like we're coming, like it's one thing for me to say living in a city, to say, yes, you know, it kind of works or kind of works well, or the ping is a little bit less than I'm used to. But I mean, the main target audience here for Starlink is not necessarily me. I have a fiber internet line where I have good internet most of the time. My latency is playing games is not a problem. However, if you are somebody that, say, has really poor internet, lives in a very rural area, this is an absolute game changer. I cannot say it enough. i am only been playing this now for a day. We're going to keep playing for a little bit longer. I got about another... 10 minutes I can do, so I'll do another game here just to make sure. But uh, again, to reiterate, just the, the, the ability to have internet like this is unlike anything, uh, you know, a lot of people have been able to experience before. Uh, and right now we're in upper 40s, mid 40s. That's, that's better than my existing internet. Uh, usually I will never see 40 millisecond latency on servers. Right now we're in the low 50s, so a little bit higher, and then upper 50s. See, it's a little bit more variable, um, but I mean, this is buttery smooth right now. Like, I mean, I can totally play on this. Like, this is totally doable. More people upstairs. Good night. So now that we have proof concept 
Starlink is working, internet is pretty stable so far. Uh, the next step is to find a permanent home, and the idea is to put it on the roof of my garage there. We're gonna mount it down to the roof. Uh, we will do that in our next video. We're gonna talk more about a permanent installation of my Starlink unit. And of course, we're gonna do all sorts of fun tests going forward. Can you game on Starlink? Can you game for a long duration of time on Starlink? We're gonna really have a lot of fun, I think, with this unit going forward. So subscribe for some more information. And of course, we'll do a full review after we really do use it for quite some time. Of course, I'm not just a SpaceX fanboy. I'm also very much an internet person. And the only thing that I love more than rockets in space is good internet. So of course, the review that you'll see on this channel will be very truthful, not just bias coming from a stalling fan. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. We'll see you on the next video.